Hey guys, I'm back with some of my favourite games from Ludum Dari 47. I found some absolute gems this time, so I'm sure you're going to want to stay around and see all of them and play them yourself. The jam version of the event is 72 hours long and lets you create the game as a team, meaning that the games can generally reach a higher level of polish than the games that are made in the compo event by just one person. I actually made a compo entry, so you might want to check that out along with the devlog I made for it. But anyway, let's go on and talk about some of my favourite jam games from Ludum Dare 47. Our first game today is called Aztec Ride by Brucey, game composer, Omer Zadok and Idan Ruse. Aztec Ride is a beautifully polished game with brilliant gameplay and a wonderful aesthetic. In the game, you control an Aztec looking roller coaster thing with every cart on your coaster filled with the most extreme adrenaline junkies you will ever meet. But why are these adrenaline junkies so extreme? It's only because the roller coaster has no seat belts. The result of this is that as you go over little bumps in the roller coaster track, your passengers fly up into the air and you have to try and position your roller coaster to then catch them again. And I thought this was about it. I thought you had to just keep at least one of the passengers alive as you kept going round and round the roller coaster. But then I realised just how neatly all of the mechanics for this game are woven in together. You see, you have a limited amount of fuel, but catching passengers replenishes your fuel in this game. This means that you can't just safely roll over every roller coaster bump and then never throw your passengers into the air, because otherwise you'll never be able to replenish your fuel source. This is then contrasted by full loops in the track that you have to maintain enough speed to go all the way around without all your passengers just falling out at the top. So the gameplay is awesome and completely expertly designed, but this is only half of the story. The art is so clean that it makes the game just completely stand out, from the coaster to the background to all the little passengers. They all follow this sort of Aztec styling that I'm just completely blown away by. And then to top this off, the music and sound effects are just phenomenal. The music is just completely on point with the rest of the stylistic choices made throughout the rest of the game. It uses these like pan flutes and these big booming drums to really sell the idea that you're in some sort of Aztec world. And my favourite sound effect has to be when the passengers fly up out of their seats. It's such a simple idea, but it really sells the effect really well. Everything here is just completely awesome, so amazing job to the developers who worked on this. Our next game is called OOO, or is it... Ooh, and is built by Rex T Gun with the music by Dan1021. And if you want a serious challenge to test your skills with a mouse, then this is the game for you. The premise is simple, you're playing air hockey, a concept that's been done before and should be quite familiar to you. But there is a twist. You're not competing against another player or even an AI, you're competing with yourself. You control one main striker and then the other striker just mirrors your movement on the table. And if the puck hits either side of the wall, your score is reset to zero. So this is really cool and as you progress through the game, you unlock different levels and map designs that keep the experience feeling really new and really fresh. The visual design of the game is really solid too. The developers have done a fantastic job of making the game feel really arcadey, with contrasting colours and the uniformity of the lettering, combined with those cool slopes you see around the score UI that are like those really arcade style ones. You know the ones I mean. The gameplay here is really punchy and solid, and it has all the hallmark flares of a brilliant little arcade title in its design. And once again with this game, I would really like to point out the music. It uses really crunchy bit crush sounds for the percussion, which I'm a huge fan of, and just builds into this awesomely catchy tune that just makes you excited to play the game. You can tell the composer has a real passion for every single track he makes, and I know this because I've checked out some of his other music too, and it's really, really good. So. Awesome work by the pair that worked on this together. You clearly work really well together and have put together an amazing game. Well done. Our next game is called Ouroboros by Kate Prediction, Squup, Pmix, Landy, and Zach Peter. A spectacular game that really nails the theme and provides a real good challenge to the player. In this game, you play as your enemies, which might sound a little odd at first, but you quickly realise that it's a necessity if you want to do well in the game. Your character, for lack of a better word, has the ability to possess enemies and trade places with them. You do this by spinning your hook and lassoing the enemy. And you have to do this because every enemy that you inhabit is constantly losing health. So you must jump to the next body before you fully decay. You then also have a standard hook attack for beating up other enemies you don't want to inhabit. And every room has to be cleared before you can move on to the next one, making for some really interesting gameplay decisions as you loop around the endless death spiral that is the Ouroboros. So you take this brilliant gameplay and design and then combine it with some outstanding art and you're onto a winning formula. 
The color palette here is just brilliant and used to full effect. It really helps the designs for each of the enemies pop out of the screen and really make them feel like they've got this rotting, decaying texture that I think is just great. This is amplified further by the animations, of which the hook animation is my favorite. It just felt so good the first time I swang it and made me immediately think that I'm gonna have fun playing this game. The music gives you a much needed sense of urgency while you're playing the game. It has just enough of a fast pace to make you feel like you need to keep moving forward and you don't want to waste any time. It's so atmospheric too. It feels like it pairs with the art and the gameplay so perfectly, it just really sets the tone for the whole game. This, combined with the sound effects that add a real crunch to every action you do in the game, round it off to make a perfectly packaged game jam game. And I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed it, so awesome work to the developers for this one. Commuter is our next wacky game by Jordan FB, Ice9, Mayot, Alex Katz, and Aaron Inc. And considering this game's title is called Commuter, I really feel sorry for these cars if this is what their daily commute is like. The game is sort of a mishmash of genres, being sort of like a tower defense slash puzzle slash strategy type game, where you're presented with a series of looping roads where regular and hover cars are constantly driving round on. You then place turrets and spikes, as well as the occasional wind blast, to knock and destroy the cars off of their looping path. The first thing that stood out to me upon starting this game was the music. And wow is this music good. It just gets you in the mood to blow up some cars and go on a rampage of destruction. I think it's something about that electric guitar that just does that. The music is satisfyingly integrated into the gameplay as well, it sort of dulls during the menu sequences and then as soon as you hit the start game button it explodes back into the forefront and just helps you get really excited for the level you're about to do. And upon playing any given level I can't help but notice the art, it just looks amazing. I just love the cleanness of the 3D models in combination with the sort of lovely like blue background colours and then the popping yellow cars in the forefront. They all fit the design really well and they're just a joy to look at. And as soon as you hit play on any of the levels, I'm just blown away immediately by the sound and the crunchiness of the turrets that you've placed. They're just so satisfying to watch. They make the best sound effects, have awesome particle effects and just make the perfect amount of screen shake they really feel like they have a massive impact on what you're doing. I also like using the spike trap to just fling the cars into the air. It's a really good way of getting the player involved with what could otherwise be quite a passive game. This is furthered by the fact that you can use this wind power to sort of blast the cars off the side of the road, which is a really fun addition. There is also a level editor too, so you can make your own levels, which is a really, really nice touch. So amazing work to the team that put this little game together. I really enjoyed playing through all of the levels. It was so much fun. Our final game today is called Hell Glider by Tyler Keeley and The Axe 316 I was drawn to this game by its bright and cozy art style. Is using the word cozy okay to describe Hell? I'm not sure what that says about me. But anyway, Hell Glider has a really awesome art style that really stood out to me when it popped up on my screen. And when I initially started playing the game, I thought the controls were a little on the heavy side. That was until I was introduced to the grappling hook and then everything was okay with the world. I can't explain just how much fun having a grappling hook is. When you first get the grappling hook, you can kind of use it, but you're not great with it. And then as you progress through the levels and get a bit more practice, it becomes really satisfying when you like perfectly swing round a corner and things. Some really cool mechanics were introduced too, like using the grappling hook to spin around these giant cogs to open doors, as well as these buttons that you could ping with a grappling hook to open up the doors. It all just made for a really fun and quite unique experience. And when you combine the fun I was having with the awesome look for this game, it just sets you up for a really great time. Another feature I really liked was the addition of timers when you complete each level. This type of physics based platformer really lends itself to speedrunning, and there would be so many ways to try and get faster with each time you beat a level, such as micromanaging your way around one corner or, or learning how to use the rope physics to skip a certain bit and just working out ways you can get a better and better time each time you play. I'm sure that with some music and a couple of additional tweaks, something like this could easily progress into a game with huge variety and tons and tons of fun. You can really tell that the developers have a knack for making fun, engaging experiences in their gameplay. This is a stunning game that is well worth your time, so really, really well done to the developers who made this. 
So that's it from my Ludum Dare 47 content. All of the games featured today can be found down in the description. I made my own game during the compo event along with the devlog for it, which you can also find in the description down below, as well as a video highlighting some of my favourite compo games from the event. From this Friday onwards, I'll be back to doing my own project devlogs every Friday and then my regular review videos every Tuesday. So subscribe if you want to check out some of that other stuff too. I found Ludum Dare to just be really fun this time around and was just so impressed by the quality of things that the community produced. It just gets better and better with every event, so I for one cannot wait to see what is made next time. But until next time, goodbye.